All right, we are recording now. Uh, again, welcome all to the weekly um, uh, Zoom Church Lab, where we're really just going to focus on um, on what using Zoom in worship and congregational life. Uh, as we'll do, is I'll begin with showing you a few slides about my learnings, um, and then I've invited uh, some folks to share a little bit about what they're doing and any experiences they've had. And then if there's anybody else that has tried this, I'll invite you to go ahead to share share that um, uh, with as, with the group as well. Um, so, um, but first, before we begin, I want to really uh, thank everybody for um, diving into this a little bit. I've been seeing a lot of people tried it in a variety of ways. And so um, really cool to see how everybody's using this with a lot of different things. I will say, um, I, again, I started before that um, at the beginning of the chat, there's a link to a Facebook group. Um, I don't know if you are starting to feel it, but out here where I am, in, I'm in Northern California, we've been um, working through this and, and kind of being in this culture of um, being in a um, uh, shelter in place and, or pretty close to that for about two and a half weeks now. So um, I know that I'm going to have to start figuring out how to, to uh, not just survive on adrenaline of everything that's going on. So I started a Facebook group that is focused just on Zoom and congregational life so that we don't have to feel like we're answering questions or asking questions in a lot of different groups. And so I know many of you have joined that group um, and that's gonna be a place that's really just gonna be Zoom specific. So everything from worship, um, there's a, uh, one of our, one of the administrators, Greg is from the Presbytery of Philadelphia and we're gonna, you talk about meetings and voting and so a breadth of using Zoom in congregational life would invite you to go over there, check that out. The other thing is, um, I just hope you're taking care of yourself. I know everybody's talking about self-care and um, if you are like me, you are over-functioning. Um, but I actually think right now that's fine, but it's not sustainable. But as we're getting into this, um, I would hate for folks to feel bad about this urge to take care of the people. I think it is a, 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 a an honorable thing when we really wanna care for our folks and provide a communal experience for them. So um, again, it's not sustainable, but um, I just hope you're beginning to think through some of that. I'm sure you are. All right, let's dive in. So um, what you're seeing now is uh, just my front screen uh, for the for the church. Uh, and we, don't, we do not use um, uh, the waiting room for the congregation, which you can decide whether you wanna do that or not. You Some of you are in the waiting room and you're coming in now. Uh, because this got pretty big last week, I decided to use a waiting room. I may or may not use that in the future. Um, but the waiting room really just lets you control when people can start interacting. Um, the, the downside is you can't put up a slide that has, like the slide you're seeing now um, is not something you can put in the waiting room, which would be awesome. Um, so I use this. So what I do is I come on about 930. Um, there are people there asking questions. I have uh, the, my two tech deacons uh, we talk through a little bit while folks are listening. Um, and then at about 10 to 10, uh, I've put this screen up and I mute everybody and then um, allow folks to kind of, then I start in, in with the thing. So um, I do welcome and announcements, uh, much like you would do for any congregation um, uh, that you would, you would have. Um, and then um, I walk through some Zoom um, questions and just reminders. So I do tell folks to just remain muted as much as possible. I make my two tech deacons co-hosts so they have muting um, power um, for everyone. You know, I think in, in with so many different levels of, of capacity and kind of technological ability, um, I do not suggest letting everybody have complete Zoom power on their own or, or muting power on their own that you go ahead and use that mute all button um, get that uh, strengthened. Um, I encourage folks to get into the chat room. Uh, again, two tech deacons are in there answering questions. I sent them a list of links beforehand that we might use or people might ask um, and ask, them, ask folks in the chat room to do prayers, to, to, to do all the things that they feel like they need to do. Um, um, and then um, I ask people to turn on their video. A lot of people don't want to turn on the video and you'll, you'll hear a lot of people I don't like the way I look. I had yesterday with somebody who's like, I don't want you to see all my chins. And I'm like, hey, that's, it's all right. Because the joy of doing Zoom worship in particular is seeing people's faces. So if you can get folks to do that, I think that that's encouraging. Um, 
The next thing is, and I'm, I'm always reminding people that this is not going to be perfect. Our in-person worship services are never perfect. So um, I don't expect them to think that this one will be either. And then I just walked through an order. Um, and these slides are shared in the Facebook group uh, of what we're going to do. Um, I do some centering. Uh, I do an opening prayer. This time I brought in one of our parish associates and, and she just unmute, unmuted herself and did the prayer. Um, I th what we're doing is we're building a little bit each week. So we added another voice, just at one, just technologically. Uh, but the first couple of times we really want to just make it simple. Folks are hearing a familiar voice, it's a familiar structure. Um, but that, so now we, we're bringing in some different things. So next week we'll do something even different. So did confession and I just have people, I, I read this while folks are seeing it. Um, and then this time the option that we moved in was to have people responding, but muting them, not having it all come through. Um, so I mute everybody and then um, they're in their spaces with their families um, going through our litany of forgiveness, um, which is there. And then uh, there's the first reveal. So I do the passing of the peace. Um, these are some, I've changed and given more instructions on these slides than I've had in the past because I've, as I've gotten feedback, giving people an idea that here's what's coming. So getting them used to switching from gallery view to speaker view, just getting them used to the technology. So um, I talk about when you, when we go to the passing of the peace, we go to gallery view. Um, I want you to scroll through, smile, all that kind of thing. So we're going to go ahead and do that now with each other. So go ahead and go to gallery view and I'm going to stop sharing. And I'm going to meet everybody and everybody go ahead and say hello. 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 This is what we do for our um, Hi. <laughs> morning. Yeah. Hi, Harvey. Hi, G. Hi, Yuki. Hi, Sweeta. Hi, Ian. Hi, everybody that's there. It's very sweet. Hi, so this is this is what we do when we uh, are um, uh, doing our, our our passing of the piece. And then what I tell them is, I'm like, unlike in the regular passing of the piece where it goes on and on and on, I can't get people to stop. I just meet everybody. <laughs> That's it. So, um, and then you stop passing in the piece. If we could only do that in our regular services, it would be so much easier. All right. So I'm going to go back and share a little bit more. Um, uh, what we do so um, after that, uh, this is the reveal. And then I just, so the way we're doing scripture, we're not, I'm not doing long sermons. I don't, I'm not sure that that is, I mean, you may be a great preacher. I don't want to say you can't sustain for 15 minutes or whatever. Um, but um, I just kind of feel like, you're still, it's still screens and so attention span and all that. But we do Lectio Divina and um, we're easing back into Lent uh, as our church in our area is our, our we're, we're heightened in our um, connection to people who are infected and sick right now. So we're striding that line between trying to get to normalcy and realizing that we're in a, our particular area in our church is, is um, are beginning to really be touched by this. So I went back to the wilderness passage this past Sunday. Um, and so Lectio Divina, if you haven't done it, I go through it three times um, and read through all this. And then uh, I do a little bit of reflection at the end. I ask them to switch um, to speaker view and then um, so that they're getting ready uh, because after this, we go right into, um, uh, into it's another reveal. And I ask them to go into the chat room and just a I ask a chat room question. And so they um, begin to have some conversation about um, um, about um, whatever the um, topic is for the week. And so um, I did, I talked about idols and temptation. And then, so what's important uh, if you're gonna use slides like this, so I go through and I just do three-ish points um, is I leave the chat room question at the bottom so folks can still interact in the chat room. So I didn't ask the question and then immediately take it away from them, but just so it's always up there. Um, and I do my three things. And then um, I talked about we're going to go to offering. And this week we brought somebody in and they then went to video. Um, and I, you can see that on the recording. They talk a little bit in the middle of it. Um, my chat room folks, you know, they posted links to giving and all that. And then we went to prayers of the people. Um, and after, and um, I do a little reminder about prayers of the people. I ask people to start practicing using the raise hand, uh, which is the bottom of the participants tab, uh, which you all can find there. Um, encourage people to use that. 
Um, and then I will call or somebody will call and unmute them. And then we just ask people to lift up prayers. And this is the last time that they, they will see um, uh, anything, um, uh, what should we call it, that they will um, uh, be on slides. So I don't go back and forth much more than that. Uh, it's just trying not to um, give too much whiplash. So I'm gonna stop sharing. Um, and then uh, we do, the way we do prayers of the people uh, is um, I have um, uh, our tech deacons. We tried this, this this time rather than me trying to track all the raised hands. We um, I just had uh, Karen was one of our tech deacons and she just called on people and she said um, so I'd, I'd say Paul I've unmuted you please share your prayer. Everybody's on speaker view so that his face comes in as the prayer and then um, uh, Karen just muted him called on someone else. So rather than try to have me interact with people like I usually do, um, we just had Karen do it. And actually it worked out really well to have somebody else. I didn't have to worry about it. I wasn't thinking about it. Just had that person go through and look at those hands. And she was a person that uses Zoom all the time and work. And so you got to find somebody that is really comfortable with, with using it. Um, and then we do prayers to people. We do communion. If you haven't seen the video, um, some folks joined me and I did a practice round with them of um, uh, so communion, we just lift up the bread and put it up the thing and do all the words and uh, and then do a little bit of uh, closing, um, uh, um, do a benediction prayer. And then um, I let, I mute people at the very end and tell them, you know, just wander off as you want and people chit chat just like it would be at the bank back of the sanctuary. And uh, that seems to go well, folks. I actually had to kick people off the meeting because we had to meet. So um, I, I gave them about 10 minutes and then I'm like, I don't care where you go, but you got to get out of here. Um, and so we kind of kicked everybody off. A few of us kept meeting, but it was lovely. People just wanted to keep lingering. Um, so a couple of learnings, and then I'm going to open it up for questions and to have somebody share. Um, um, is this um, one is what we found is people were going to old links still. So in your um, in your Zoom account, uh, go ahead and delete meetings that are no longer going to be happening. Um, we had a couple of people do that um, where there was there were people um, that went to an old link for just a totally different uh, meeting we were having because in their email somewhere they just saw even though um, what we're doing is every Saturday um, night I'm sending out a blast to everybody that says um, it's the same link but here's the link and uh, we have found that people I wish I didn't have to do that but um, folks that pops up on their email at the top of the list and they just click on and um, they're, they're in the, the right meeting. But we have probably three or four people who were in um, a random other meetings that had shown up in their email. I don't even know if they were all for us, but they said, oh, nobody was there. I'm like, well, we were there. But so that's one thing that that's a learning um, uh, this week that I've seen happen and and I see it happen. Um, Often now that you're scheduling more meetings, you're probably gonna see things popping up in your inbox that say somebody's waiting for you in your Zoom meeting and you're like, I have no Zoom meeting. It's because there's an old link and unless you delete it, people can still go into that meeting. So um, go ahead and delete. Once you've recorded, um, if you've recorded, you've downloaded, um, uh, you know, just make sure you delete that, that meeting. All right, I'm gonna open it up for questions. Um, and then I'll allow you to unmute yourself, which is a great deal of power. So let's have and any. Um, so Robin, uh, Robin, I see a hand up. Go for it. Unmute yourself. Um, let me go. Or I'll unmute you. I got you. Go ahead, Robin. Oh. Bruce, uh, thank you so much for these labs. Uh, I know they're exhausting if you've had many, many Zoom meetings per week, but thank you so much for doing this. Um, question, do you use music in your worship service at all? Thank you. So um, music is an interesting thing. Now, there was somebody in the Facebook group that talked about using music um, and uh, that it worked really well. So the, if, if you're going to use it, um, so we don't, um, we're going to do it this next week. We're having our, um, our music person play from his apartment. I'm muting everybody so they can sing and we're going to do slides. So they'll get the music, they're going to sing and I'm going to mute everybody and not give people the permission to unmute themselves. It's because we don't, I mean, some of them may want to be the soloist, but we don't want that to happen inadvertently. So, um, so we're going to do that. You can also embed a YouTube clip into your Google Slides, what I use, 
Um, but it's best if, if you have that downloaded so it's running right off of your computer rather than dealing with all the internet buffering. I, I still think that um, you got to test that out depending on people's internet speeds in your community because the awkwardness, I still, we don't sing together. I know some folks are singing together and they like that. I, it doesn't uh, jive for me, but um, so we're not using it. We're going to do it next week. We thought it'd be too much to do it this week, but we are going to start doing it. All right. Um, all right, Paul. Yes. Go for it. What's your question? Uh, I have a question about the recording, uh, about um, how do we make sure that it's recorded so that we can post it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I also have a question about the telephone call-in option. How does that work? What do, we, what, do, what do you actually see as on the screen as a host? Do you know those people are there? How do you find out the best telephone number to use? Those types of things. Right. Great, great questions. Um, and please, people in the, the great thing about this group um, is there are people on this call that, um, again, people are interacting in that chat room. And so I'll talk about recordings and getting the chat transcripts. Go ahead and ask questions in there too as well. Um, so let me talk about recordings first. So, um, so it depends on how much your chat room is used and how much you're willing to spend. It, you know, Zoom, it, I'm grateful for Zoom, but they're, and they're making a ton of money right now, but it's helping us. So, you know, balance that for whatever it's worth. Their add-ons are all really expensive. So after the $14.99 or $14.95 thing to add on, it becomes, starts to get expensive. So uh, it's $50 a month to add on above a hundred people. So unless you're really going to use that often, it's, it's probably not worth it. The same goes for your recordings. Now, the difference in the recording when you see it on, when you go off the link that Zoom sends you and you're, you're doing it off of the Zoom platform is you see the chat room on the side. So you'll see the, the conversation and then the chat room is on the side. When you download that and put it up on YouTube, like I have our past conversations, that chat room is not included. So if, if the chat room is, um, uh, really important like it is for this. There's a couple things you can do. You could decide you're going to leave all the recordings on Zoom. I'm not going to do that because I love you all, but I don't want to spend that much money because after about three or four meetings, you, um, you run out of memory on Zoom and you have to pay more money. So it's just not. So I download them and then post them on YouTube and I'm going to download the chats because a lot of information is in the chat so that you can get those transcripts and I'll have those posted somewhere. I haven't been able to do the first two meetings, but I'll get those done. So that all this information that's in this chat now, you'll just be able to click on that and that'll just be a text that got kind of run down. Depends a little bit on what you want to do. Now, the other thing that is not ideal about the recording is they never record in gallery view. So it's only going to be, it's, so it's not the same if you're trying to record it for a, to say, here's what worship looked like. It's really going to be the person talking most of the time and your slides. That's fine, uh, but it, you don't get the big reveal with the, all the faces and all that. That doesn't, um, that doesn't happen. So um, I'm going to make sure nobody's sitting in the waiting room here. Okay. Um, so um, that's, the, that's the downside. So either you're going to pay more money, have the chat. Um, neither of them give you the gallery view. It's always going to record in speaker view. So that's, it's just not the same. Um, but anyway, so that would be what, so Chelsea's saying that her video caught some footage of the gallery view. Um, if you've been able to figure that out, please let us know. But so far the, the ones that I've done um, uh, have not been able to do it. So um, that's the one thing. So phone calls. So how you'll see people with the phone calls. So if you look, you'll look in your participants thing. If you look on your screen, it'll just be a, generally a phone number. If somebody's only calling in, It'll be a phone number, which becomes difficult because you don't know who it is. So if you're calling on people, it's not a name. People who are using the phone with their screen, you know, when you, if you're calling in, um, you'll get, it'll match up with their screen name and that will work that way. Um, the difficulty with the phone people, uh, the phone people, um, it's like they're an alien group. The phone people um, is that, um, you can mute them, but you have no idea. Like if they want to be unmuted, they, you're not watching them. There's, it's, it becomes very awkward. And I think the control is somebody put in the chat room, if you remember it, I think it's pound six, is that right? To mute and unmute on your phone, but it's not intuitive. So it's not like, uh, so you'd have to tell them if you want to unmute, 
um, you need to hit, I think it's pound six, somebody will have to correct me on that. But the other piece is they can't see people either. So you also may not just want them muting in and out uh, whenever. So the, the call in piece does create a little bit of, um, it's a little bit more difficult, um, but you know, that that's the only way people can get in. Now, um, the other thing is that um, what I've been hearing is that sometimes people are going through that list of numbers at the bottom and they're tied up or they're not, they're, they're, it's the system is getting overloaded. There is rumor, and I don't know if it's rumor that, that free, the free version is, no long, is not going to have call-ins as much. And I don't know if that's going to happen or not because the system is getting overloaded. Um, I, I usually just, um, I try to avoid people calling in if I can. I know that that is the biggest option for some people, um, but um, it just makes it a little bit more difficult. So uh, what I've done is I've had people um, practice that first. I found if somebody can only call in, it's going to be confusing in general. So have, some, have them practice a meeting first so that they can go down the list that's in the invite and so that they can, um, they can go through those numbers at the bottom of the invite and kind of find one uh, that eventually works. So that, that's what I've heard about it. Uh, we did have a, we had about, I don't know, 12 people. We had 125 or so on Sunday. I think about 12, 15 were on phone only. Um, so that, that's kind of what ours was. All right. Um, other questions? Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to call on uh, Leslie. Go ahead, Leslie. I think I got you unmuted. So I'm sorry I got booted off, but the guy before me really answered my question. So okay. I'm good. Awesome. Great. All right. How about, I'm going to lower your hand. How about John? Uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of couple of points. Uh, I did see some that you're talking about the music on Zoom being so bad. I did run across the thing this past week that somebody had found a way to fix that within the audio settings on yes. Zoom. I couldn't find that. Yeah, it is deep. It is yeah, a deep dive. Is. There, is, there is a music setting. So Zoom, the beauty of Zoom and why it works so well is it automatically adjusts sound and voices and like it's just uh, whatever the magic is right the computers. but there is a setting deep in where you can change it to music setting right i have not done the time to look for it but <laughs> apparently there is so if somebody has figured out exactly where it is and i haven't searched for it so there may be a help page yeah. somebody wants to try and find that but yes john yeah. there is there is one yeah the other question I, I, you're using google slides and i tried that i usually use keynote for regular worship. I could not figure out how to get Google Slides from advancing automatically. Oh, so that so that's just in a setting on your slide. So you um, right. at, at, there's a transition uh, tab at the top when you just go on a slide and transition tab. And in that there's just a button you'll need to unclick, but you'll have to do it for all your slides. Right. But I would say if you're comfortable with whatever you're using, yeah. Just keep using that. I mean, that, I mean, there's no you need to totally dive into multiple technologies. You can. I, you know, I've tried it just for the collaborative aspect of it, but yeah. It is great. We do Google Slides for our regular worship, which is much more collaborative than what we're doing now. I'm just doing them. Uh, but when we, for our, our, our regular worship services, four or five, that's why we use Google Slides um, over ProPresenter or any of the other ones. But right. yeah, the collaborative. Yeah. Okay. Other questions? You're good? I'm Thank good. You. Thank you. All right. Let's go to um, Julie Hodges. All right. Go for it. Good, good morning. Hi, everybody. So we did, we had a successful Zoom worship, all things considered, yesterday yay. morning. Um, yay. Praise God. But for some reason, one of my people who signed on, who's a techie, all of a sudden his whole screen showed up on our screen with all of his stuff <laughs> i have no idea what happened so he's yes. like okay i'm gonna get out of the whole meeting so he got out and came back in i had no control over it Do you, so I, you will only let that happen to you one time <laughs> it was bizarre so, so it was fine he, but what's what happened so the confusion for people and this happened twice last week to me and i it, after the first it took me till the second time so if you're really nervous about this um, you're just looking at something and all it says is if you're like your video is not working, you see this thing that says share screen and it's that sounds like, oh, I want to share 
my screen and so you can see me. Right. And so that's for folks who are on that lower kind of that just in in early on. That's what happened to us in the meeting is she's like, oh, I was trying to share my video. I'm like, no, no, no. And she just shared her screen. Fortunately, there was nothing on there that was embarrassing. Um, but um, which, yes, exactly. Woo. Um, so that's what he did is he just shared his screen. So and uh, he just has to unshare it. Everybody who's in your Zoom has the opportunity to share their screen. So you can set it so that I, so I've set this one, this meeting to say, no, you can't do that. Um, but so if you go to, um, I believe it's in, let me make sure before I start telling, telling more. If you go to um, um, participants at the very bottom and says more, you can, you can tell people whether they can, um, um, uh, oh no, that's not it. Lock unshare. Yeah, unlock share screen. So I've I've locked share screen for you all. So even if you all try to share your screen, it's not going to work. So um, that would be what I would do, especially in your larger gatherings or your worship gatherings. There's probably no reason at all in most of your worship services that you're going to need to have other people share their screen. So right. you can lock that down. So but is that it, in this screen right now under the share screen or is that in the settings as the convener? So to, to, yeah, it's in the settings of your convener initially. Now, if, you, if you've if you unlocked it and you let people see it, then everybody can go ahead and share their screens. Okay. But okay. in your settings, um, I believe when you set the meeting up and after you start the meeting, you can, you can make it so that people can't share. There's two things you okay. can make it so people can't do. Okay. Um, one, you can make it so people can't unmute themselves. And then two is you can make it so that people can't share their screen. Okay. Well, and everybody, as you more. said, is very gracious. So thank sure. you for that. Well, but the biggest like... issue is just you don't want to see anything that you don't want people to see. I mean, that's just, <laughs> yeah, that yeah and, you know, okay. text, text messages flying up on people's screens and all you just, um, so one story that somebody shared with me that um, they were allowed, they given permission to share is that um, and I put this in my tips on my blog post is um, just remind people that the video, if they're on their phones, follows them when they walk into other rooms or they go to the bathroom. <laughs> now you have control to turn people's video off, but if you have a hundred people, you're not going to see that somebody has walked into the restroom and is starting to go ahead and, and has their phone and they're wa and so they're just seeing everything. So um, those techniques are really important. Um, remind folks that it's kind of like your pack on your mic, right? When you're walking around, turn them off. Um, but yeah, so, so there was one meeting where people almost saw somebody, they saw toilet, they saw pants starting to go down, but they clipped off the video before they saw anything else. So we're just, yeah, it's a good thing to okay. remind people. Thank you, Julie. Okay. All right. Thank you. Looking for other hands. Uh, Susan, hey, I'm going to unmute Susan. Hello. Go for it. Hey. hey Bruce. Hi, company. Thank you so much for this. Um, so I'm trying to figure out the simplest way to shift gears between uh, different different views and such. So like the music has been lousy. So I'm thinking about asking my musicians to record music and then trying to embed it. And I'm wondering if the ship, like if I can have a window open that has the zoom tab and the Google slides tab so that I can shift easily because otherwise I have to like open PowerPoint and then launch it and share it. Like there are too many steps. I'm trying to shorten the number of steps. Right. So you meet, let me just make sure I understand. So um, uh, just between the two, the, the, the screen with everybody and your, your uh, presentation, whatever you're doing. Right. Right. So um, no, I mean, you could, you, so the, really, cause it's all in that, that share button at the bottom that you're switching back and forth and you're ending right. and sharing. So what you would do is you keep your, um, uh, your PowerPoint in presentation mode and then um, um, share just the app because then you're just going back and forth. So there's no way actually just to click on one screen and just click on the other and drag. There, it's, it's not quite that smooth, but you just have to share and unshare. So, so if I, sh like I just hit share application uh, and then it goes back to you and then stop sharing and it immediately comes back. 
So it's two clicks over and one click back is theoretically what it should be. But um, I was thinking it seemed like there was a third, it seemed like there was a third step. I had to, I had to stop sharing. I had to, no, I had to shift from speaker view back into my own, my own uh, desktop into PowerPoint launch no, and share. Yeah, you shouldn't have to. Um, I don't, I never work with the view because the view is all directed by them. You're not determining how they're viewing you for good or bad. Like I wish I could control how you see me. Right. But, right. But you can't do that. So your view doesn't really matter to them. So you just have to share your, your presentation. Now the, the thing to make sure you do when you're doing it is to make sure your presentation is in presentation mode so that it takes the full screen or it looks like it's the full screen on their side that it's not in your editing mode. So I've seen folks where they go over, it's still in the editing mode, then they have to hit pres present and then it, and so there's extra steps there, but just leave it in present mode and then um, go ahead and then you can um, switch back and forth a little bit easier. I don't think it's, but it's not full screen. But so if, you just, if you just share the application and not the screen, then it will be the it, as full as it can be. So you'll see when I share, you still see a little bar at the top, and that's a Google Slides thing. And I've just I'm just living with that bar at the top. I've cleared my bookmarks. I've taken everything off of it. So when you see mine, for instance, um, you're still seeing at the top of that this kind of bar at the top. Yeah. You can see it, right? So now now that. If I wanted it to go to full screen, I could I could do that, but um, um, this this is just easier for me personally. Right. So that's 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 more of a personal preference. But I think it, some other folks that use PowerPoint or Keynote, um, if you're using it and going back and forth a little easier, um, you know there there may be a little bit more um, expertise out there than that. And do you know if embedded music in the slideshow plays with better sound quality than live music? Um, I, 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 that's a good question. I believe I've heard both that they're both work. The, the key thing is what you need to do is to make sure down in your microphone on your left hand side, you switch to computer, um, uh, switch to, uh, computer audio so that it's, it, it's coming from your computer and not through your headsets. Otherwise it's just like they're listening to your microphone. So you want to make sure that you switch off of whatever you're using to, um, use it off of, um, get the computer audio. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Either way. The other thing is don't uh, is embed it and have the, if you can have the video ripped and on your computer, that's just alleviates buffering. Um, but not, every, so it depends. I've, I've heard it go well both ways. Thank you. All right. Uh -huh. All right. I'm going to keep going. Um, I see uh, Leslie Ann. Hi there. Thank you for this. Um, a couple of things. One of the things that we did was I had somebody to be a liturgist. I had somebody to represent the congregation so that when, um, when we did responsive readings, let's say, it was me and the person representing the congregation. And what was kind of fun is I, in gallery view, I could see people actually participating. Mm. We did the same thing with music. We had our... Um, choir director playing the piano and singing and I could see people singing along. It's awesome. Even though they yeah. were. So, so that's the best part about zoom and why I'm not a fan. I'm not live streaming is fine. I love seeing all the faces and that yeah. you just don't get. Now the key is you have to remind people again that they go to gallery view. Otherwise what they're seeing is just you talk, and then the liturgists talk, and then you I talk. Yeah. So make sure, because you can't control what they're, how they're seeing things. Um, then that's the difference between doing a meeting and doing a webinar, where webinars, you control much more what people are, are seeing and experiencing. So um, that's great, that's a great idea. So doing the back and forth between two people, just make sure that they're watching the gallery view so they can see each other talking and I'm also reminding people over again scroll through because if you have a, we had 120 people scroll through and watch multiple screens as people are interacting and then they're seeing all these people that they haven't seen in a while um, you, people that ha have moved away I mean it's just kind of this really I think holy kind of time so thank you Leslie all right one more thing oh one more yep go for it 
Yeah, we we had this one kind of huge glitch. Mm -hmm. I someone else was the host, um, and what we discovered is you we you were a much smaller enterprise than you. Mm -hmm. some of you. Um, you have to designate an alternate host because yes. what happened was his computer crashed Ooh. and Zoom picked who was going to be the next host. <laughs> and that person was on the phone. <laughs> oh, no. Well, you, all, you, le you learn, right? That's the, like, okay. Quite an enterprise getting that back. Note to everybody, assign a co-host. <laughs> Um, you know, I, you know, we all don't want to be super control freaks over this, but in this case, um, you be the host. I mean, I really kind of think you, if you can, you be the host or at least get co-hosted. So you have some, you have some power in how things are done and, and all that, I think, but that's, that's, I've not heard that before, but that's what would happen. Yes. <laughs> I'm surprised they gave it to a phone though. Is yeah. that, <clears throat> Okay. Great. Um, I saw, uh, thank you, uh, Leslie. If you can go ahead and mute yourself, that'd be great. I saw Weeda. Is that I'm printing, I'm printing your name right? Um, I'm going to unmute you. And Weeda, is that how you say your name? Weeda Watson? That's correct. All right. Great. Go ahead. What you got? I had a, I had a meeting and I, I totally understand about the co-host. It's essential. But one of the things that I did was I set up all my assets in a Google Doc. So all I had to do was just click you know, when I was ready to go to that, or if I had a co-host, they could do that, and then they could switch to that screen, so I didn't have to go through opening, you know, like Google or something else, but I, or, or go to a link or something. I just set that up, and I had a couple of slideshows and things in there, so I just had, like I said, the link, and somebody else, like a co-host, might be able to go to that and open it, and, but anyway. Mm -hmm. That's great. Just another um, option for how to get quickly between things. Right. So the co-host question, I saw a couple of things pop up on the chat here real quick. So it's important to understand the distinction between assigning a co-host when you start the meeting and assigning a co-host when you schedule the meeting, sorry, and a co-host when you start the meeting. So when you are um, planning a meeting, at the bottom it says assign co-host and you'll get this message. I assume most of you do not have the enterprise version of this unless you work for an institution or something. And um, it'll say you can't assign somebody um, because um, uh, they're not part of your organization. That is because um, if you have one of the higher level ones, um, you're planning with the whole company. So what we're talking about is when you start the meeting, when folks are in it, then you assign them as a co-host. So even so at that, that early time at 9.30, um, I, I make sure my two tech deacons are there and I'm like, okay, you show up. And then as soon as they get on, I go over and I make them co-hosts. So that's the difference. So that thing, whoever asked that question, that's a, that's a crucial one. Cause at the bottom you want you just put in an email and it's like, Oh, it does, you can't do it. But what we're talking about is when you start the meeting, as people come on, then you assign a co-host. So as you're doing, I mean, we're in this for a long haul. So get a couple other folks who really can do this, understand it. So you can trust that they will be, co-host um, um, and do that well. So, all right, I'm going to keep going. Let me find some other, I'm um, Shannon Peterson. Hi, I think you answered most of my questions about the co-hosting. Um, so okay. assigning, can you assign more than one co-host if you have yes. like two tech de deacons in your, um, yep. Okay. And, and what can, happens? They can run things while you're, so, you don't have to like run the slideshows and do all uh, that. No, so they don't. That was just going to say they don't have that kind of control because that's coming yeah. off of your machine. So no, all they have control is basically everything. If you look in your participants side, they have control to unmute, to mute, to kick people out. So if you are having what they call Zoom bombers come in, which I have not seen that happen yet, but it's bound to happen at some point. Somebody's going to jump in and be obnoxious. They have power to go ahead and mute them um close their video kick them out all that the other thing what happens is they show up at the top of the participants list so um uh, for instance um if uh, uh heather is on hey heather so i'm gonna go to heather shortledge and i just made heather a co-host so if you go to your um uh, no it's power don't do anything wrong there heather i can i, I know you're a trickster um uh so now if you look at your participants list heather's name is at the top 
with mine, right? As the host and the co-host. So folks can, if they have questions, they can go right to her. There, there's all kinds of things that you can do. So I, I have, um, so most people on ours will see four, four co-hosts because I have a second screen set up as well. Um, and then um, I have two, um, um, two um, co-hosts. All right, I'm gonna take you off of being a co-host, Heather, because I don't trust you. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> so can you just talk a little bit more about your setup then? How you, because we try to do it, and you can see my background right now is a picture uh -huh. of what, like we did a screenshot of what we looked like, because we were actually, we had people in the, in the sanctuary that okay. were presenting. Uh -huh. So we didn't have people all separated, but we need to move right. to that point. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I mean, this is, you know, I know folks are just really, so keep in mind that I'm sitting in one of the hearts of what, what's going on and what we've been really strict about that. And I know that that's kind of rolling out. So I, this is not judgment on anybody who's doing things, however you're doing them, but um, I'm of the perspective that I want to model what we're asking other people to do. Yeah. And so being home, so I'm in my backyard and, um, I have, I brought out lamps. That's the other thing is I brought out a couple lamps to make sure that my face is well lit. Um, and so I have a couple, so if you looked at it, I mean, it's this really kind of, like it doesn't look professional. I have like a desk lamp and a living room lamp pointed at me. And then I have two screens. I have two computers. I did bust out my fancy mic. So I use, um, for my podcasting, I use a, a Zoom um, uh, uh, H6. Do not go out and get one. You, when you look at it, you're like, <laughs> what? Um, but having a good mic is, is good to have. Um, and then, uh, but the two screens is important because you're able to see what other people are seeing. And I think that is really important for folks. Um, you know, if you really want to get specific, right? I mean, I wear a solid color shirt. I do all that kind of stuff just so it, any, and try not to be, have anything distracting. Um, so sometimes I'm in the backyard and so you're looking now into my backyard. So you're not going to see people walking around, but if I'm flipped around outside, like my family is walking around in the kitchen. So I think it's just like you would pay attention to the aesthetics of what you would do in a congregate in a sanctuary would do the same kind of thing, except I would be at home uh, doing that. Well, that's uh, kind of why that's I helpful. played with, well, I played with this background. And so this is the background of our sanctuary which yeah. might look kind of weird. It, it does, it's, I'm not saying yours does, but it can look weird because when you start moving, there's this weird, like if you've watched people, you play with the backgrounds, there's yeah. this weird like uh, blurry thing that happens. So you may want to, I, I just, I think just the joy, yeah, I think the joy of this is, um, you know, I don't like well-polished services in any form and any platform. So I don't try to make this, like super fancy Les Leslie Ann is now in some grass. What are, where are you? Um, <laughs> I don't know what's going on there, but anyway. Um, so um, yeah, so I just like, just be you. I mean, this is the, the why it's worked for us is they just kind of get Bruce, their pastor. And I think that's, that's their own the element. most, yeah. I think it's just yeah. the most comforting thing is the service doesn't feel that much different other than once they get beyond the platform and it becomes comfortable then it's like, oh, we're just having worship. And that's really what's been happening is that folks are like, oh, now we're doing this. And everybody, like nobody forgot their communion elements. I mean, it was like, it was just, and we also had, um, I think we had about four or five churches join us as well, two or three people from different churches. Oh, cool. um, where they're, so, you know, I think there's some opportunity just to be big church together and do some different things. All right, I'm going to keep okay. going Thanks. here. Um, uh, Laura uh, Barda, I'm going to unmute you, go for it. Hey, um, you talked about two screens. How do you set up the two screens? So you log in, you have another computer and you just pretend you're someone else. Or okay, so you have to be able to pretend you're somebody else. You can do it that way. Or you can, so if you have a paid version, you can also, so paid versions, this is good to know, is you can log into multiple meetings, but you can't host multiple meetings at the same time. So if you're, a, so you could just log in as yourself again, and it's going to show up as Laura Barta two. I think that's what happens. Um, and then you can see it on the side. You can also just use your phone, whatever. It's just whatever you're going to do is have it so that you can um, um, 
see what the people, other people are seeing. So even if you log in as Laura Barta two, you're going to see what a participant's going to see because they're just seeing that as another login. Um, okay. uh, I, I've used my daughter's computer and just had her log in that way. I mean, it, it doesn't really matter that much other than by what the name shows up. Um, but you, but having that second screen either on your phone or on another screen, you just log in again. Okay, so you do have to have a second login. Okay. Well, you don't. You you don't have to. You just have to lo make sure you logged in on the next computer. So you could use the same login, but you're just going to show up as your same name. So you got to just make sure you go over and change the name. Again, it just makes it confusing for people if they see your name twice. Okay. Um, so just go on that second computer, change the name. Your um, and that way, it's not as quite as confusing. All right. Um, other, so I know that there was, um, uh, I think Michael Moore, are you on? No. Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, you are. Where are you? Oh, there you are. There you are. Michael News. All right. I had asked them to go ahead and share. Um, they went through it. I'm going to ask um, a, one community to share each Monday with just what you're what you learned, how it went. And um, so it's all yours. Go ahead. And, and everybody, if you want to go ahead and you can go to speaker view and then you'll get to see them. Go for it. <laughs> and uh, I'm frankly, I'm going to let my uh, technical expert really share the mo share most of it. This is the critical part of not only having a co-host, but having another person running the whole show so that I'm basically in place leading worship. So I'll turn it over to Denise. Okay, so since last Sunday, we've had three worship services, two fellowships, a bunch of tutorials, and today we're going to begin midday prayer, and also we're going to start hosting how to host a meeting tutorials so mm -hmm. that our committee chairs can begin to host committee meetings, and we don't have to be involved in all of it. Um, so then um, for fellowship, what we did was we just had everyone um, unmute and people just talked. And what happened was if somebody started, two people started talking, one person would just back off. And it worked really well. We had about, what, 30 people 30. join and it still worked that way. We, we had people even call in on the telephone because we have several in our congregation who do not have computers or cell phones. And, um, and they loved being able to be involved. Uh, let's see, for worship, we are using the same format each week for each different service, like the same format for Sunday worship, the same format for midweek, the same for midday prayer, so that hopefully it's gonna be less time consuming in the future because we have spent, um, Too many hours. You know, well over 100 hours in the last week trying to get all this up and going. Uh, um, and we, and like you said, we began with slides, but then, and then we switched to camera. It's hard to switch back and forth. Um, I have Keynote and you cannot, Keynote only presents as far as I can s figure out in full screen. So then it makes it really hard to switch back and forth. So I learned that I can do it pretty quickly if I, if I set up share and then I hit return with my uh, with one hand and then have the cursor on on um, play so that it, if I if you do it fast enough it works if you don't do it fast enough it screws up so it uh, we're going to try to limit switching back and forth as much as we can. Um, let's see where is my next note. Oh. Um, we set up a studio in our um, chapel. So we have an external mic and an external camera and it just sort of makes it look a little more professional. Um, but I'm expecting we may start sheltering at home in the next um, week and then we're gonna have to rethink all that. Uh, let's see what else. Um, and we have a musician who's been coming in and we can do the six feet and he's been playing the guitar and it's worked well, I think. Um, let's see, and then I've got two, a couple more things. Oh, so we had two problems that happened. One was we um, start with a slide that has a picture of the church and it says, 
you know, um, midday prayer or Sunday worship. And it says, we'll begin at, and it has the time, but we do that because we knew that the waiting room might be confusing to our um, congregation who is, um, well, I'm what, 58 and I'm probably the youngest person in our congregation. Yes. Um, <laughs> And so we, we have the slides showing, and so we just have to be quiet when the first person shows up. Well, we got there about 45 minutes early and I was practicing, and 35 minutes um, before worship, someone signed on. So it kind of screwed everything up. We, um, we, and then, uh, but I was glad they were there. And then the other um, thing that happened that was really kind of, um, unfortunate was, like I said, we have a bunch of people who don't have computers. And so I can mute all the people on computer, on computer, but not the phone calls. So we had someone, it wouldn't give me the option to, to mute the phone calls. So we had someone singing along um, because, you know, we encourage people to sing the hymns and the, vi and the slide said, you know, you're on mute so no one can hear you but God. But I didn't think about the phone. So this woman was singing along on the phone and someone else on the phone said, you're out of tune. <laughs> <laughs> church, church is church is church. <laughs> so let me just ask, so you should be able, you should have control over phone people as well. But when you, and I assume you have the basic account of the, not the, the free $14 one, but, one. Yeah. $14. so you should. Uh, so when you went through your part, but it didn't give you an option to, to no. mute them. Mm -mm. It did not. They're landlines, not cell phones. Oh. A cell phone can mute, but a landline, it won't let you. And see, we have a lot of people without cell phones. Okay. So That's... I'm just going to have to remind mm. people at the beginning that if they're on a telephone, that people can hear them. Okay. That's um, good. That's good. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. And um, oh, and also I scheduled all of our meetings as recurring meetings, like um, midday um, worship, midday prayer is a recurring meeting. Worship is a separate recurring meeting. Um, and so each one is separate, but that way they have the same um, meeting number. And, and so what I did was I made a little chart and it has the event and the time, a link, the meeting number, and then I just chose one random phone number, and that's the same phone number for call in every single meeting. And, and it's did been it, working. It's been working. Okay, good. Because yeah. I know that that's been an issue for for folks is that call in number. Sometimes it's getting overloaded, but it just depends on where you are and all those kind of things. So that's helpful. Yeah. Thank you all so much. I gotta. Um, we're gonna almost done here. So um, thank you, thank you, thank you uh, for diving in. All right, uh, if you would go ahead and thank you. All right, um, all right, let me take a couple last questions and then we're gonna go ahead and, and um, end up. Um, Kathy Keener, go Hello. for it. Oh, I just have hey. to share. Yep. Because this, we're in a small congregation, when it was time for sharing joys and concerns, my co-host, who actually was doing the main hosting um, from her computer, would invite people going down the participants list and asking whether or not they had something they wanted to share for joys and concerns. And with screen share, that meant everybody got to see mm. their faces while they said, yes, I have something or oh, I don't. And we got to hear what those were. So about how many people? Just give us a... Like, 30. Okay. Um, the, the piece that we're concerned about that we're realizing is then we really don't want to post this, uh, the recording live for just a general populace to be able to see it off of anywhere. We're having to keep it within a group. Um, and that means we're not doing the broad evangelization with the service recording, but it is a really important piece for this particular community to be in care for each other. Mm -hmm. Great. That's great. I mean, I think every place is going to just have to f translate this for their particular setting. So thank you. That's very helpful. Um, I do want to point out, um, Abby Mohop is on in the chat. She shared a document that she's put together. And if you join the Facebook group, which is the very first note on the chat room, um, uh, there's a few people. I think there's one from Next Church. There's Abby's. I think Richard Hong, some of you know him. He's going to share his. His is totally dorky, tech, like dense, but it's really helpful. So I think he's going to share his. Um, if you have seen other one pagers or simple ones, go ahead and post them in that Facebook group. Um, there's a lot of good conversation going on in there. All right, I'm going to take um, a couple more. I'm trying to look for some more hand raised here. Um, 
Oh, I just saw one. Let me, sorry, get out of here. Uh, oh, go ahead, uh, Robin. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Robin. I'd mute yourself there. Thank you. Just two mm -hmm. quickies. One, yep. the screen jumps around a lot. People move around a lot. Do you know why that is? We just have to live with it. People jump around. So you mean? In, uh, um, in gallery view, uh, you know, what is causing people to move? Uh, the position. Oh, oh, the positioning of where people are. Well, it's one is when they're talking, they're going to pop to your screen. Right. So that's going to be one. And if you're scrolling back. A lot, forth, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it bumps somebody else off. So I pin my two, um, um, at least one of my co-hosts, I did this last week and tried to just pin a person as well as I pinned the, um, the, our, our, um, our offering person who came in and spoke. So what, so one of the things we did this time, which you may want to try to do, I think, think broke things up for a little bit to have more voices is we, um, we invited a local um, leader who runs is doing our um, folks who are experiencing homelessness in our area and what they're doing. And so he came in and just, he got to talk for a little bit um, about what's going on in our particular area. Um, but you would pin them. You could, so I pin Phil up so that I'd make sure that I could unmute him and be ready. So you could do that so that those ones will always stay the same, but otherwise things are just going to move around depending on, so somebody may log off. They may do something else. I'm getting, um, I'm watching these backgrounds. You all are hysterical. Is it Ivor? Ivor? Hell's line is, up in the sky somewhere and Kristen Gramberg, Chris, yeah, you're on the beach. That's awesome. All right. Um, all right. Sorry. Just one more thing. Yep. Go a for frozen it. Frozen screen periodically. You got frozen once today. That's just from bandwidth issues. Yep. That's going to be bandwidth issues. Um, so it could happen from both sides. One, it could be yours. If your internet is being funky or it could be, could be mine. One of the things that I did do, if you are using Chrome, is to turn off all of your extensions. Oh, good idea. Because idea. that will drag down your processor. So that's just a, I looked up something because I had it happen once. I'm like, why is this going on? Um, especially if you're using Grammarly. Grammarly takes a bunch of your processing speed away from your computer. So uh, that's a huge culprit. So I just, um, I just uh, turn off all my extensions when I, during worship. I tell all my family to get off of the Wi-Fi um, just to make sure that during that particular time you're good. But if you're seeing, like we're saying, there's so many people online right now that you're, it's, everything is slower. So it, it could be from either side. It's just hard to, hard to tell. All right. Last question. Is it to, uh, I don't know, I can't see anybody hands. Do you want to go ahead and uh, ask a question or share an experience? Come on. I know you're not shy. Yes. Ivor, go ahead. Or John, I, I, I'm gonna go with Ivers time, John. Okay. Sorry. Oh, I, know, right. yeah. uh, I was just gonna share that we uh, struggled with the music, but once we, I posted something above in the chat, but um, because Zoom compresses everything, if you unclick, there's several things to unclick in your settings, it makes it uh, dramatically better. <clears throat> if you're trying to do music, live music, so we had different people in different homes doing music, and it, um, without it, it's impossible to listen to. <laughs> so uh, tell, tell us a little more. Those settings are in before you're setting up your meeting or, or can you do it while you're in the meeting? I think uh, you can do it while, but um, it's basically, um, uh, there's a, like a, you, you do original sounds, enable original sounds. Yep. It has to be from a desktop or a computer, not a phone. Yep. And then there's a persistent background noise and uh, and intermittent background noise, you got to disable those. That's what causes the music to sound so, because uh, it's built for voice speaking and not for music. Right. Um, great. So you put a link in the chat. I'm going to do a little more research on that because we're also looking at it, but I'm trying, I'm just looking right now. I can't find it in while we're in this meeting to try to change that. Let's say one of you wanted to sing um, in the audio settings. It doesn't look like it has anything like that, but um, that's a good one. So let's talk about that in the Facebook group. It is nine o'clock, you all. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for uh, being here. I love doing this. So while, um, and it's Monday morning, so I'm like, woo, all right. So I'm done. I don't do this on Friday night. Um, so uh, thank you for diving in. 
Um, I love seeing, share your stories. I mean, all the best practices that we can share with each other, the, the, the better. Um, I also, if you are in the Facebook group, I would love, I mean, if you want to invite people into that group, I'm not, this is not about brand building. This is just about trying to not have to answer and interact with questions all over. And, and not that any of us has all the answers, but if you're like me, you like, you just want to help. So um, if you want to invite people to that group, join the group. Um, let's keep talking over there. I will post this um, recording um, and the chat transcripts in probably in the next couple of hours uh, once, it, once it's ready from Zoom. So thank you all very much, and um, I will see you next week. All right, all. Take care. <laughs>